I am a huge fan of smartphone microscopes, and although they can't see things like bacteria, there are tons of cool stuff out in the world for you to look at, such as textiles, the sweat pores on your fingerprint, the security features on a dollar bill, small insects, plant surfaces, and so many more. Is this just a glorified magnifying glass? Sure, but it can zoom in to see details that are measured in microns. So yes, I am gonna call this a microscope. The way that I see it, you've already paid for a super nice camera inside of your smartphone. So these costs are baked in and the software features that are inside your camera are phenomenal. For example, when you pair your smartphone with this smartphone microscope, you get autofocus, which even this mega microscope back here doesn't have. And kids absolutely love this thing. We used to sell a product called the Micro Safari and the parents thought that the kit was amazing, their kids loved it, but what they really loved, what they went buck wild with, was this mobile microscope. But it's not just for kids. I personally keep one of these in my backpack too, because if I want to go out on a hike and I find a cool little bug that I want to pull it out for, I can do that. Or if I'm headed to a party and that party is super lame, pull out your mobile microscope and suddenly everyone loves you. They also make phenomenal gifts. They're inexpensive and super unique. When I designed the first version of Micro Safari, I went and found every model of smartphone microscope that I could to choose one, and there was a clear winner, and it was this one. It was the most well-rounded, robust, the magnification wasn't too high, because high magnifications are actually a problem when it's on a smartphone microscope and you're trying to look at an object. The magnification's too high, you can see all of the handshake in your hands and getting a still image is completely impossible. It has an integrated LED, it's inexpensive and effective, and it works with most phones. This is the model that we still carry because we love it and we use it in our personal lives. But I hope that this video will be solid advice for anybody buying whatever smartphone microscope, not just the one that we carry. Most smartphone microscopes attach with clamps of some sort. Either it's attaching to the sides of the phone or it's attaching to the front and the back of the phone like this one is. Some manufacturers have even gone completely crazy and they're using sticky tape to stick it to your back of your phone. I don't recommend it, but it's an option. So how does it attach? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Just center the lens over the camera that you're gonna use. Pinch to zoom to widen the field of view. And if you have multiple cameras, I recommend that you pinch to zoom first before trying which camera will work the best because some phones like the iPhone will actually switch to a different camera after you zoom in. Just a heads up, even if your smartphone microscope claims to be universal, it might not work with all phones. When we were first testing out this mobile microscope, we literally sent an intern to Best Buy to try on every model of phone that they had available, and we made a list that you can look at. This list is not entirely inclusive though, so if your phone isn't on there, you can always just measure. I'm being fancy and using calipers here, but you can use a tape measure or ruler instead too. The camera that you use should be less than 23 millimeters from the edge of the phone, and the phone itself has to be between seven and 12 millimeters thick. You might also need to take your phone case off. Okay, we're gonna do just a little bit of a live demo here, starting from my most favorite smartphone microscope down to the smartphone microscopes that aren't that great and are downright just kind of weird. Starting out, we have this generic smartphone microscope, which is my favorite, and this is the one that we carry at microsafari.org. Go ahead and center it on the camera and see what it looks like inside of the mobile microscope. So I pinch to zoom to get it to full size and take a look at this $20 bill. See some of the security features, see the numbers and the letters. Pretty sweet, image quality is good. It was really easy to put on, really easy to use. Here are the stamens of this flower. This is a microfiber cloth. You can see the little individual fibers, and then we have this photo, this uh, photo of an astronaut on a sticker. I was hoping that we could see the CMYK dots on it, but it doesn't really look to be the case. They all kind of blend together. You should be able to see it on this Micro Safari Aqua box, though. Eh, you can kind of see it. I mean, I mostly just had this here for, for product placement, so let's actually get rid of that, because it's not an ideal sample. This is an ideal sample. Lady doing Pilates, we should, yep, there we go. We can see the CMYK dots. This is out of like a newspaper article that we got in our junk mail. So yeah, great, you know, good microscope, love it. It's not weird, it's not gimmicky, it doesn't have anything odd going on about it. Second most favorite, I'm gonna give to this Apexel microscope. This is something that they sent me for free. They've sent this to quite a few different YouTubers 
for a review. It's a good microscope. The only thing I don't really like about it is that it's pretty awkward to get it centered over the camera because you can't look down the lens at all in order to center it. So I'm going to have to just do this as best as I can. You can see it's not really centered here. I'm going to have to just wiggle it. There we go. That looks like it should be centered down. You have, you have to turn on this light. It is battery powered, as was the previous one. This one, I believe, is a rechargeable battery. The last one was a non-rechargeable battery, battery, but it's fine. Okay, there we go. So you can see it's pretty much the same level of magnification as the previous one. Image quality is great. Pretty hard to put on, though. That's the thing I really don't like about it. It, yeah, it looks to be about the same level of magnification, maybe a little bit less. There's the astronaut. Yeah, looks pretty good. Lady doing Pilates over here. I believe the, oh yeah, you can see the CMYK dots on this one really nicely. I think my camera's not picking it up as well, or there's some vignetting going on because I don't have it perfectly centered over. But yeah, you know, not a bad, not a bad microscope. I like it. It's, I believe, pretty much double the price of the one that we carry on our website, that generic one I just showed. So slightly better, perhaps. Perhaps not, though, because of the inconvenience factor. So is it worth double the price? Eh, not to me. Uh, okay, number three, I'm going to give to this tiny scope, little smartphone microscope. This one's really weird, I have to say. The, what they've decided to do is put sticky tape on the back of it, so you have to really, really carefully center it over your camera and get it so that the other side, the portion of your flash on your camera is in this area because it actually redirects that light and uses light pipes to pipe it around the center of the lens on it. The problem with this one is you have to have a third party camera app so that you can keep your camera flash on all the time. Turn flash always on, okay, there we go. So now we can go ahead and put it on here. So this, oh man, it doesn't really, the angle doesn't show up as well on the camera, unfortunately. Let's see if I can get it angled perhaps, or I can hold it up to the camera. You can see there is some vignetting. Okay, that looks, that looks okay. This one is also really hard to get centered over your camera lens. I mean, but like you can see the three dimensionality to the ink on this dollar bill. I mean, it's pretty nuts. The, so this one, this has an absurdly high magnification to it, but the problem is that the high magnification causes other issues. For example, the depth of field is extremely shallow. And you have to have your object way up against it. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna need to recenter this thing. It just does not look super good. Hopefully that's better. Eh, that's slightly better, not ideal, but we're gonna roll with it. Hopefully this is a real world example to you though of how high magnification smartphone microscopes are actually just really hard to use and practically not really that usable. I mean, if you need a super high magnification, super good image quality mobile microscope, this is, it's a good one, don't get me wrong. It's just really hard to use and I think really application specific. Okay, that's that one. Okay, so number four best one, maybe this one also from Apexel. This one's a little bit interesting of a microscope. What I like about it is that it has this interesting, it's a very, very interesting like uh, clamping setup that it's got going on. It clamps to the outside of your phone and then you can adjust this thing, this portion. You can actually unscrew this and now you can center it over your camera. Okay, one second, give me a moment. Maybe it's even gonna be good for me not to edit this down so you can see what it's actually like to fumble around and fit these cameras onto the smartphones. Okay, that looks to be centered there. Uh, great, now I have to turn it on. Okay, now it's on. And here we go. Okay, so it looks like it has to be away from it a little bit. Not very magnified. It's definitely lower magnification than the very first one that I showed. Image quality, pretty good. But, I don't know, this is borderline a macro lens. Not really the same level of magnification. I don't know, it's, it's borderline. 
it's borderline. I'll give it that. I sort of wish that they had higher magnification on this lens. If they had higher mag magnification, this might have been my favorite just because it's like it, you can get it centered over the, the lens a little bit easier. It does take some time. The build quality is really good. I mean, just, ooh, can you hear that? Very satisfying. So yeah, give this one the number four spot. And then after that, the rest of these are mostly just weird generic options. I'll try some of them. We'll see how it goes. Here, let's do this one. I don't know what brand this is. I got this on the From China section of eBay like four years ago. Who knows if they still make it anymore. So you center it over like that, and now we need to turn the light on. Can do this somehow, maybe twist this. I believe you do have to twist this. It's just really hard to do. Aha, there we go. Okay, so now looks like I'm not centered. Okay, closer. Okay, that looks like it's pretty centered. Pinch to zoom. Now hopefully it should work. Okay, so it's fairly high magnification. Fairly high magnification. Oh, it's actually, yeah, that's pretty that's pretty high magnification. The image quality is it's decent. It's not great. You can tell there is some spherical aberration going on. There's also some color distortions in the image. Edges aren't super crispy. I mean, it's, you know, it's not bad. Certainly not bad. I would say most of the other microscopes, uh, mobile microscopes that I have here in this lineup, they're mostly all just kind of like this one, where it's sort of like generic, not really that anything uh, interesting about them. This one, okay, it does have an interesting feature. For some reason, they decided to add an ultraviolet LED on here too, maybe for doing some kind of inspection of money, for maybe seeing the security features or something. Maybe let's actually try and see if we can find anything on the dollar bill. I've never, it's a live demo, I've never actually tried to do this. Kind of just looks purple. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the point of that is. Uh, okay, that's all for the interesting ones. It's time for the weird ones. Let's start with this one. Look at this chunky, chunky boy right here. Like, this is a solid machined aluminum. I, I don't know if I'll even be able to get my camera in frame here so that you can see what it looks like. I mean, I, I don't know whose idea this was. I mean, it, it'll just fall off of the phone if you hold it the wrong way. And, I mean, look at this thing. It looks like there's even a real microscope objective, a metal microscope objective inside of this. You know, interesting. I'll give them creativity points. How do you turn it on? Looks like there is a button there to turn it on. Now I'll need to go through this arduous process of getting it centered. Okay, looks like I did it. Now... Maybe twist this thing. Oh, okay, we have an image. Now I gotta focus it using the focusing side knob that it has included. Can I get to the 20? Okay, there we go. All right, this is extremely high magnification. I mean, we can't even, I'm on what was the 20, but you can't see any of the lettering anymore. And it's, of course, because it's a really high magnification, it's really hard to get focused. Uh, it, it. Okay, hopefully you can kind of see that. I know I'm mostly out of frame right now. But you can kind of get an idea. Oh, this one should be in frame. Hopefully this one will show up. Uh, okay, we had something. We had something. Oh, look, we saw a fringe of a stamen just now. This is a good example of why more magnification is not necessarily better. I mean, if it makes it unusable, what's the point? We have that one, we also have, we also have this one. This one is super long, and there's no way I'm gonna be able to demo this thing because it's just gonna be out of frame. The interesting feature this one has is that to turn it on, you pull it out and the light turns on. It's a, you know, it's a little bit silly of a feature, but I appreciate it. Nice clicking motion. But yeah, same problem as the other one. This one's too high of magnification to really be usable, and it's just huge and bulky. Yeah, otherwise all these other microscopes that I have here, they're all just fine. Nothing really that spectacular about them. Like I said, this one, I just really like this one. It's the least gimmicky. You saw how easy it was for me to put it on in the beginning and use it. 
it just works. That's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get to them. But otherwise, I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time.